Before starting, let's do a 10 second commercial. Hi, my name is Sander van Vught and I have created videos uh, that prepare for RHCSA and RHCE uh, on Red Hat 7. Uh, just type my name on informit.com or in Safari Books Online and you will see my Red Hat Certified System Administrator complete video course. That's for pur purchase. Uh, this video is for free because I like sharing my knowledge. So let's move on to the topic of this video. This video is about systemd and mount files. So systemd is the new way of starting services and other stuff on Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7. There is also an opportunity to automate mounting through systemd. If you go to the default systemd directory, that is user lib systemd system, uh, you can see that there are a few mount files. Uh, I like the tmp.mount because it gives a good example of what is supposed to be in a mount file. So basically, uh, there's a unit file that describes some dependencies, there's the mount file that describes uh, what should be mounted, and then there's the install file that describes uh, how it should be installed. That is, if you enable the file, uh, where exactly it should be enabled. So, in the case of the TMPFS, for example, you can see that TMPFS, which is a RAM file system, can be used as a device on the TMP file system. So the idea is that if we do systemctl and able tmpfs.mount Of course I make a mistake here, I'm sorry. If you do systemctl enable tmp.mount uh, it creates a symbolic link and it makes sure that the next time after a reboot my tmp directory is on a RAM file system. But this is not what I wanted to talk about. What I wanted to talk about is about NFS. So if you go to server 1, server 1 is my NFS server. So let's do a quick connect to that server. And if we have a look at the etc exports file, we can see that there's an NFS export with the name NFS export, uh, which is shared in a very basic way to anyone uh, with a read write mount option. Let me do a show mount dash e on a local host. I like doing that to find out and confirm that NFS is really operational. And you can see that at least from local host it is operational. Now if you have a look at the firewall, uh, by doing firewall cmd dash dash list all for example, uh, we can see that NFS is open. This is NFS v4 functionality, where in the firewall you just open port 2049 uh, to provide access to all users uh, through NFS. The interesting thing is that if we do show mount dash e uh, on server 1, it hangs. And that is because show mount is not compatible with the way the firewall opens NFS v4 traffic. So don't use show mount to verify, uh, just mount the share. Now NFS shares can be mounted manually, uh, but that is annoying if you have a server that is supposed uh, to activate the NFS share uh, all the times. Now you may be aware of the old method, uh, which is put the NFS share in etc fs tab. So the idea is server1 uh, colon slash uh, NFS export, uh, let's mount it on MNT NFS, let's give it an NFS file system type. Uh, and then you need to make sure that this mount is affected only at the moment that the network is available. And that is why we use the underscore netdev uh, mount option if you want to do it through netdev, uh, through FSTEP that is. Now the thing is that FSTEP is old school and I don't like old school because the idea of systemd is that systemd uh, can do this for you. So we want to do this in systemd. Now if you want to create something custom in systemd, uh, you should do it not in user lib systemd system but in etc systemd system. 
Uh, ETC systemd system is the location for everything that you have created yourself. Userlib systemd system is for default stuff. Never modify anything that is in Userlib systemd system. So what I have done in ETC systemd system, I created a file with the name mnt-nfs.mount. Now it's not by accident that I've used the name of the file mnt-nfs.mount uh, because the directory that I want to use to mount the nfs share in is slash mnt slash nfs. So the name of the file is based on the name of the directory. Let's go there. So I just copied over the tmp.mount file from user uh, lib system d system and I modified parts of it. So first there is the unit section. The unit section describes dependencies. Uh, then we have the mount section. The mount section describes what should be done. And then we have the install section uh, which describes uh, the wants. Now let's assume, let, uh, I will just assume that you are not that familiar with systemd yet. So let's go through these lines. In the unit section we have a description. The description is just nice so that in system CTL you can see what is happening uh, with the unit. Now these two lines are extremely important after equals nfs.target and requires equals nfs.target. Uh, nfs.target is the part that should be available on the client to make sure that uh, the nfs mount can be automated through systemd. So nfs.target should be present and uh, this service requires nfs.target which means that if nfs.target isn't present this service, this service won't work. Now these dependencies, well I admit the, I have spent quite some time this sunny Saturday afternoon in the south of the Netherlands. Instead of being outdoors, I figured out those dependencies. Now, what exactly is happening? Well, uh, we want to make an NFS mount, and the NFS mount can only be affected at the moment that all NFS services, uh, supporting services on the client, uh, are present. So let's quit the file for a while, and let's do an LS. And in the ls we can see nfs.target.wants. Uh, the nfs.target.wants directory defines what should be available in the nfs target. So it's the services and other systemd units that are in the nfs target. Let me do an ls here and you can see it's just the nfs log service. But I want it to be there because it is something that I would like to have on all my nfs clients. So what I've done, I have enabled the system, uh, the NFS target as well, by using systemctl uh, enable NFS target. Let's do systemctl status NFS dot target, and you can see that the current state is enabled, and you can see that the current state is uh, active as well. So let's get back to the file that we were in, which is the mnt nfs mount file. So as I mentioned uh, after equals nfs.target means this service should be after nfs.target and this service requires nfs.target. So this is what makes my ordering clean. And next we have the mount section. And in the mount section, I'm just defining what I want to mount. So what equals server1.example.com colon slash nfs export. That's the name of my export. Uh, where equals slash mnt slash nfs. That's the name of the mount point I want to use. Type equals nfs. Uh, that's the name of the file system, which is nfs. And options equals uh, nothing at all. I don't need any spe specific options. Uh, I just want to keep it simple. And next, and this one is also very important, uh, this is the install section. At the moment that you type something like systemctl enable uh, nfs, uh, I'm sorry, systemctl enable mnt-nfs.mount, which is the name of this file, uh, the file should know where it is installed. Uh, and that is defined by the wanted by, 
So one it by is multi-user.target. So I have already done this because I wanted to prepare and show you something that is working. But if we go to the multi-user.target uh, once and we do an ls uh, dash l, we can see a lot of information including this line. And as you can see here, uh, this is a symbolic link that is created in the multi-user targets do, uh, dot directory. And that makes sure that the MNT NFS service is started at the moment that the multi-user dot target uh, is started as well. And this is the default state of a system, so this is always started. And well, what happens? is simple. Uh, if the firewall is open and then you have taken care of everything else and you restart the server, uh, well after a restart you get the mount automatically. So let's do a mount and there we can see, there it is. And just to verify, I'm not going to reboot, I've just rebooted. Uh, we are not wasting time on that, but just to verify that it really is working, I'm doing system CDL status uh, mnt nfs dot uh, mount to check the status of this mount file that I have created and you can see it is loaded this is systemd telling me so it's not lying it's telling me that it is loaded and it is enabled and we can see that it's active and uh, it has been active since 14 minutes on the directory slash mnt nfs and with the what uh, server1.example.com slash nfs uh, export so I can go on and work with the NFS mount from systemd. Now isn't that cool that systemd allows you to make mounts completely dependent on whatever you need to be happening instead of this old silly way of putting them in the FS tab file. And I wanted to share that with you.